Now there's some new functionality with the hotkey sticky keys here. So if we have a sphere in our scene and we go ahead and make poly mesh 3D, go into edit mode obviously. In previous versions of ZBrush, you could tap the S key to bring up the draw size. Of course, you can change your draw size up here. You can hold down the space bar. You have access to draw size and a bunch of other things. But I usually like to just tap S on my keyboard and then click with my stylus on the tablet and then move to make this a different draw size. Now, you still have that functionality in ZBrush 2021.6. However, they've added the functionality of uh, sticky hotkeys, which is essentially you can hold down S and then without even putting your stylus on the tablet, you can just drag left and right and that'll change your draw size on the fly really quickly. So again, as we're over here sculpting and I wanna change the draw size, I'm just gonna hold down S and then move to the right a little bit, let go of S, and there we go. Same thing, same thing if I wanna go smaller, just hold down S. Again, don't even need my stylus on the tablet and now I have a smaller brush size. There's some control over this. So if you wanna go in here to preferences, interface, down here under the uh, click submenu, you're gonna see there's a sticky keys activation timer. So essentially a lower value is gonna be very fast and a higher value is gonna be very long. And what that means is if I drop this down to a very low value and I just tap S on my keyboard, you're gonna see it's gonna blip up and then disappear. So if you're gonna use this sticky keys method, you can hold this down and it works fine. Uh, it'll basically remove your ability to tap S and then use your tablet to drag to a different draw size. If you go in here and you make it the highest, you'll see now you can tap S and it'll stay up there pretty much as long as you need it to. So then you can go through here and again, just click and drag with your stylus on your tablet. So if you are gonna fully embrace the ability to use sticky, uh, you can just again, drag that to the lowest and then it's just, it'll just disappear immediately. So it's very, very fast. Again, if you like the, the previous method, you can just make this a higher value and then it'll stick around for you to kind of go through here and just click and drag like you used to. And you also may have noticed when you start up ZBrush in this new version, uh, if you go in here to preferences, again, go down here to startup, we now have an auto reload recent project. So if you have this turned on, every time you start up ZBrush, whatever you had loaded the last time, it's gonna load it for you automatically. If you don't want that functionality, just go in here to preferences, turn that off, and then go in here to config, store config. And once you hit this button, that will stay off every time you start up ZBrush. Now there's been another update to the brush icons. Let's talk about that real quick. Uh, let's say I've got a, well, let's grab a sphere, drag it on our canvas, go into edit mode, make poly mesh 3D. And I wanna test a new brush that I wanna make. So we got our standard brush selected. I'm gonna go ahead and change this to a drag rec stroke. We're gonna drag, we're gonna grab an alpha in here maybe alpha 18. Uh, so now when I click and drag on my canvas, that's what's gonna look like. Let's go ahead and crank that intensity up. And there we go, now it's making like a little pyramid. Well, let's say I want it to go the other way by default. So I'm gonna undo that, control Z, hit Z sub, go ahead and drag that out. And that's the result I'm getting. Um, it's a little bit low res. I can't really tell what exactly this brush is doing. So I'm gonna go over here to geometry, hit the divide key a couple times, get some more resolution going. And now when I click and drag, that's the result I get. It's a little, bendy around the uh, edges here. That's because this focal shift here, you're gonna see, let's make my draw size really big. You're gonna see that focal shift is the kind of softening out the edges there. That that middle circle needs to be out towards the edge to really get the full effect of that alpha. So I'm gonna take that focal shift to negative 100, make my draw size smaller. Again, just we just talked about sticky keys. You can hold down S now and just make this smaller. So now I can click and drag and that's the result I'm getting. So let's say this is a great brush. I'm gonna use this all the time. Uh, for projects I'm gonna work on, but I don't wanna reset this brush up every single time. So I wanna save this as a custom brush. Well, I also, when I save this as a custom brush, if I hit the comma key and I go in here to brush, you're gonna see these brushes have all sorts of icons. For example, if we go in here to tracks, you're gonna see this brush. Oh, I can see exactly what these brushes are gonna do when I use them, well, some of them, uh, because you know they have an icon that says, this is what this brush is going to do. So I wanna do the same thing for my brush. So I'm gonna hit the comma key to close light box. And on this sphere, I'm just gonna go through here and I'm gonna drag this a bunch of times. And you know what? I can also know that I can hold down Alt and that's gonna change the behavior from the default, which I changed the Z sub. Now it's gonna be Z add. So if I want to, I can go through here and I can add some pyramids. So once I've done this, I have a pretty good representation of what this brush is capable of. And if I wanna have an icon of that, when I go to save it, I can go in here to brush and you used to have to hold down alt to select the icon on the canvas. Now, if you just click the button, that'll go ahead and grab whatever your sub tool is and make it your icon. If you want to make in, you know, bring in your own custom icon, now you go in here and you hold down alt and now you can select an icon and it'll bring up a window for you to go and, you know, grab a JPEG of whatever you want. But anyways, now that we're done with this brush, of course you can go in here to brush, save as. 
We're going to throw this into our C program files, Pixel Edit ZBrush 2021, Z brushes. I've got a test folder in here. We'll call it Pyramid. So now whenever I want to grab this, I'm going to hit the comma key, go in here to my brush tab, go over here to my test folder. And you see, there we go. There's our icon. There's our Pyramid brush. And we're good to go. Now, if you wanted to always come in with ZBrush whenever you hit the B key and have it down here, where you see I have some custom brushes loaded in by default, you would want to save this brush and see program files, Pixel Logic, ZBrush 2021, Z Startup. So every time you start up ZBrush, brush presets. And now if you save it in here, every time you start up ZBrush, it'll always be in your brush menu. So you can hit B on your keyboard. It'll always be in here and then you can assign a hotkey to it. Now let's switch to another project. Let's go ahead and grab uh, that frog we were using earlier. So I'm gonna hit the comma key to go in my light box. Go in here to project, demo projects. Go ahead and grab this frog again. Go ahead and say no. Let's go over here to subtool. And just to isolate the frog out of the scene, I'm gonna hold down shift and then turn off this eyeball. So now we just have this frog sitting in our scene. So if I go over here to the alpha menu, and I'm gonna drag and dock this over here to the left just by grabbing that little white dot in the corner. I'm gonna go down here to alpha from mesh. So I go ahead and click that and this is gonna give me basically a Z grab, a depth grab of this to turn it into an alpha. Of course I can zoom out of here, I can frame this, I can move this around. And once I'm happy with this alpha, I can go ahead and hit okay. Alternatively, you can always go through here and you can grab any alpha that you want. And essentially what we're gonna do is we're gonna take these alphas and we're gonna go in here to alpha to mesh. So if I click to mesh, it's going to give me uh, a representation of this alpha in mesh form. Now, if I have this alpha selected and I do two mesh with flat enabled, now it's going to give me a flat version of this alpha. You're going to see it gets rid of any of that gradient. Essentially what it's doing, if you go in here to alpha modify and we crank up that contrast, uh, that's kind of the, or actually maybe intensity. It might be increasing. Yeah, it looks like it's increasing the intensity quite a bit uh, to get you that result. So it's not going to take gradients into account. It's going to crank the intensity up and really give you uh, the full effect of that alpha with no gradients. Same thing for that alpha we captured manually. We have the frog alpha here. If we say flat to mesh, now we have a perfect silhouette of that frog in geometry form that you can use to you know, create decorations or whatever you want. And just again, a really easy way to grab a silhouette of an object as a mesh. And we mentioned this in an earlier video. Let's go ahead and grab a sphere out of our brush palette. Again, we're in edit mode. Go ahead and make poly mesh 3D. And we're gonna go down here to geometry and then so divide this a couple times. And we're going to use, again, hold down S for your sticky key here. And then you can just click, um, you know, let's switch back over to our standard brush. We can go in here to BS. Oh, we don't have a standard brush anymore. What I should have done when I made my original pyramid brush is to clone it off. And then I would have my standard brush, not a huge deal. I'm gonna go in here to brush, reset all brushes. And now we're back where we started. So we didn't lose our pyramid brush, by the way. Uh, we It's no longer in our brush palette because it's not a preset, but we can go into the comma key and we can grab it right back out of our test folder here. Just double click it. And now it's down here in its own pyramid. And I have my standard brush. So again, B, S, J, we'll grab your standard brush here. And now we can sculpt on this mesh. Now in the old days, if you went in here to stroke, I'm gonna get grab that white dot and drag it over here. And we turn on lazy mouse, you can crank that lazy radius up. By default, standard brush is set to one. So if you go through here, it kind of very subtly smooths out your stroke. Unfortunately, it won't let you like put dots. I mean, it kind of will, but you kind of have to drag a little bit. Uh, if you want to, you can go over here, you can tap L to turn off lazy mouse, and then you can put dots in here and kind of get that effect. Uh, of course, you can also turn on your lazy mouse and that's going to, again, put that little red rubber band behind your brush. And the larger this radius is, the more it's gonna put that rubber band behind it. Now, again, in the old versions of ZBrush, if you hold down shift, that'll allow you to go into a straight line. And then when you let go of shift, it used to actually stop short of where your cursor was. No longer. Now, when you, let's go ahead and crank over the intensity here. Now you can even hold down alt and then shift. And then when you bring this back down and you let go of shift, it's gonna drag a straight line all the way to the end of your cursor. Now, since we're holding down shift, you want to make sure that, you know, if you hold down alt and then shift, if you do, if you just do shift and you want to drag a straight line and you're like, oh, it's actually just smoothing. Well, you just need to be careful. You're going to hold down, you're going to start drawing. So 
press with your stylus on your tablet and then hold down shift. That'll uh, make sure you're not smoothing and go into straight line mode. So now you can just let go of shift and put your finger back down and you can just kind of go around in straight lines now. And again, it's going to snap to the very end of your cursor regardless of the lazy radius that you have dialed in. And one more thing, and again, under the Z plugin where we were playing around with the AO earlier in the videos, there is now a USD format exporter. So just like the other exporters, you can go through here and you can do, I want to export the selected. The bit, so if you have multiple subtools in our scene, and we'll hold down shift and again, turn on the eyeball to turn on all of our subtools here, I can say export either just the selected subtool. Again, you can go through here and alt tap to select the subtool or select it in here in your subtool stack. You can export all visible. So if you have this one off, it'll just export what you see, or you can export all regardless of what you see. If you're ready, you just go ahead and hit save. And again, it'll save in that USD format. If you've already saved a file, you can hit the uh, resave button. And of course, if you want to load a USD file, just go in here and use USD format and load. And you may have guessed it, if you just want to reload the last uh, scene that you had loaded, just click the reload button and you're good to go.